Be Quiet's Lightwing series. Are these the RGB fans for the RGB lovers out there? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I test and review PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and graphics cards. Before I get into this overview to have full disclosure, these fans were sent to me to test and review. However, as always, all opinions expressed in this video are mine. So if you do end up liking the video, please hit that like button. And if you really like the video, how about subscribing to the channel? I would also like to thank my patrons for supporting the channel via Patreon. Thank you very much. Okay, let's take a quick look at the Lightwings lineup. So there is the 120 PWM, which has a four pin PWM connector and a max rated RPM of 1700. There is the 120 PWM high speed, again has a four pin connector and a max rated RPM of 2500. There is the 140 PWM, which has a four pin PWM connector and a max rated RPM of 1500. And finally, there is the 140 PWM high speed. It has a four pin PWM connector and a max rated RPM of 2200. And that is the Lightwings lineup. Okay, so I've tested and will be showing both the 120 millimeter variants here. So first up is the 120 PWM. Again, it has a max rated RPM of 1700. It is a seven blade design. It has a rifle bearing and it is a five volt ARGB LED with the 5050 connector. And these sell for $27 each or 80 for a pack of three. And they do come in black or white, but as far as I can tell, the whites only come in the three packs. For the 120 PWM high speed, again, it is a max rated RPM of 2500. This does have a nine blade design. It is again a rifle bearing. And again, it has the five volt ARGB LEDs with the 5050 connector at the same price. Now, before I get onto the results of my testing, I wanted to be very clear. All this testing is based off a sample size of one for each fan. So this isn't necessarily the exact performance you'll get, but it should be relatively close. Okay, starting with the PWM range of the Lightwings 120 PWM. So with the PWM set at 100%, this fan has an RPM of 1690-ish. At 50% PWM, this fan has an RPM of 915-ish. At 0% PWM, the fan stopped spinning, so it has an RPM of zero. The fan kicked back on at 6%. The motherboard isn't showing the RPM, but it, the fan is spinning at around 140-ish RPM. So all in all, a really good RPM range for the non-high speed fan here. Now for the PWM range of the Lightwings 120 PWM high speed. So with it set at 100%, this fan has an RPM of 2585-ish. At 50% PWM, this fan has an RPM of 1450-ish. Again, it stopped spinning at 0% PWM. The fan again kicked back on at 6%. Again, the motherboard isn't showing it spinning, but this fan is spinning at around 250-ish RPM. So a really good RPM range for the high speed variant as well. That's it for the PWM range. Now taking a look at the ARGB LEDs. It is a ring light, so I can understand some people really liking the look of this. And then I understand that some people may not, but the colors do look good and the brightness is adequate for a medium lit room. And other than that, I'm really not sure what else to say about it. So let's move on. Now, before moving on to my standardized testing, if you are or do appreciate all the testing I've done here, could you please support the channel by using my Amazon Associates links in the description? All you need to do is click on the link that suits your location. And when you add an item or items to the cart and order them, the channel will get a small kickback at no added cost to you. Plus, if you do have any questions on how I test the fans, please watch my fan testing methodology video. I go over most everything there. I'll have it a card along the top and I'll also have it linked down in the description. But please note, I have updated the cooler that I use for the CPU cooling performance test to the Frost Commander 140. This way I can test 140 and 120 millimeter fans on the same cooler. Okay, so I'll be showing only the Lightwings 120 PWM high speed on these first three charts. I tried showing both, but it seemed a little too confusing. So I will only be showing the results for the non-high speed variant in the comparison charts. Sorry about that. Starting with the DBA and RPM, 
At four volts, I measured a DBA of 32, which is my noise floor. And the RPM was at 875. At six volts, the DBA was 32.1, while the RPM went up to 1365. At eight volts, I measured a sound level of 33.2 dBA and an RPM of 1820. At 10 volts, the dBA went up to 35.4 with an RPM of 2240. Finally, at 12 volts, the sound level went up to 39.2 dBA and the RPM went up to 2610. Okay, now for the sound recordings at each of these voltages, but first the ambient room sound for your reference. The airflow testing is next. As usual, I'll keep the DBA numbers up for your reference. At four volts with no obstructions, it had an FPM of 85. With the mesh panel, it had an FPM of 64. And with the covered panel, it had an FPM of only 10. Jumping up to 12 volts, with no obstructions, the FPM was at 405. With the mesh panel, it had an FPM of 395. And with the covered panel, it had an FPM of 260. Moving on to the CPU cooling performance. At 4 volts, the average steady state CPU temperature was at 85.7C. At 6 volts, it was at 79.6C. At 8 volts, it was 76.1C. At 10 volts, it was 74.7C. And at 12 volts, it was 73.7C. Okay, I'll be comparing both Be Quiet Lightwings 120 fans to the Be Quiet Silent Wings 4 PWM high speed, the Deepcool CF120 ARGB fan, and the Inwin AM120S ARGB fan. We see that the non high speed fan is significantly quieter, while the Silent Wings 4 PWM high speed has the same RPM as the Lightwings high speed, but is 3 dBA louder. On to the airflow. When voltage equalized, the AM4120S, the CF120, and the Lightwings PWM high speed all move a very similar amount of air when there are no obstructions. With the mesh panel, the testing looks much the same. The same three fans again move a very similar amount of air. I'd also like to note that the non-high speed Lightwings fan is still moving a very good amount of air at 8, 10, and 12 volts, more than enough for most systems. In the cover panel testing, there is a large FPM drop across all the fans. However, both Lightwings fans do manage to maintain their FPM better than the other fans do. Moving on to the CPU cooling performance. So with the fans voltage equalized and with the chart zoomed in, we see that the Silent Wings 4 PWM high speed performs the best. The AM120S, the CF120, and the Lightwings PWM high speed do perform well enough. The Lightwings non-high speed maybe did well enough at 12 volts, but yeah, not so much at the other voltages. On to the 34 dBA testing. So having all the fans noise equalized to 34 dBA or 12 volts if they don't actually get up to 34 dBA. So with no obstructions, the Lightwings PWM was only at 33.3 dBA, but still had an FPM of 305 meaning it is outperforming the Lightwings PWM high speed when noise equalized with its 285 FPM. When using the mesh panel, the Lightwings PWM had an FPM of 280, which again means it's outperforming the Lightwings PWM high speed with its FPM of 265. Then with the covered panel, the Lightwings PWM had an FPM of 190, and the Lightwings PWM high speed had an FPM of 200. So it seems that the extra blades on the high speed variant do help with static pressure. Plus both Lightwings fans are performing as well as the Noctua NF-A12 in this test, which is pretty impressive. 
So what do I think of the Be Quiet Light Wings 120 fans? The performance behind a mesh panel was very similar to the other ARGB fans that I have tested. However, the performance behind a cover panel was way better than I expected it to be. Now I did look into this a little bit. Uh, the best thing I could understand it being is that it has a larger cone or like, like the intake cone is larger than other fans. More like, so think of it like as FOV in a video game. So like a game has 90 FOV, these would have like 100 FOV. So it's just opened up a little bit more. So because of the way my little thing is here, I guess it's upside down, sorry. So it's just able to take out a little bit more air than a typical fan through that bottom mesh. So it's just like 80% of the air it was taking through was through the bottom here. So as soon as I covered that up, it dropped to like near zero. Now, most fans would, it's just, it's able to take out a little bit, a couple of degrees more air than a standard fan. So this does then make sense to use these as intake fans for something that has a solid panel that has then the intakes on the side or something like that. It might just be able to pull out a little bit more air. So it is a very interesting idea, but it will be a very case dependent thing. It all depends on how, and again, if there, if the sides aren't beveled or chamfered or whatever, it likely won't quite pick up as much because it's still not like a 180. It's more of just like if a standard fan is 90, these are like 100, maybe 105 type of thing. It, like again, it's a very interesting thing. It should help in a lot of cases, but it certainly won't help in every case. Because if it's a bad case, it's a bad case. So don't get those cases. Now, I guess I do have to mention that these are not cheap fans. Like they are $27 a piece. So you would think the performance would be better than they are because they're being compared to fans that are like 10 to 12, 15 ish dollars. The other ARGB fans that I showed there, like, so it, like they're t almost twice the price of these other fans, but performing much the same behind a mesh panel. So it is hard to say like, these are great fans. Now you do have the Be Quiet backing it and the whole Be Quiet thing of like, the fans will last 300,000 hours, which I do have my questions on since again, this is only a three year warranty. So I guess if you are looking to go with these fans, you do have to understand that you are paying somewhat of that be quiet tax type thing. So I guess it's just like, do you really like the look of those ring lights and things like that on if these fans make sense for you? They're certainly not a bad fan, but they are a pretty pricey fan for the performance. If that kind of illustrates how I overall think about these. Well, that is all that I have for this one. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There is the HFG Discord server. I do put up all of my charts for the PC cases, CP coolers, and PC system fans up there. A link is in the description. It is completely free to join. All you have to do is agree to the server rules. Uh, there is also Patreon if you'd like to support the channel directly. Again, a link is in the description. Uh, you may want to check out this video here. It should be along the same lines of the video you just watched. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.